If you are new here, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. If you have been rocking with your girl this far, welcome back. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually getting ready to go out for dinner and drinks. So I'm going to show y'all my little makeup routine that I do. And then we're going to follow the video with some Q&A. Um, well, not Q&A, but like just different tips with dental hygiene, getting your first job, what to expect, and all that stuff. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So... I have my face freshly washed. I just got out the shower and I'm about to do my makeup um, to go out. I am not a makeup artist. None of that. I do my makeup how I like it. So I do what's best for me and I'm just showing y'all what I do. If you want to follow what I do, do it. If you don't, that's fine too. But I'm just showing y'all how I do my makeup. So just starting off, I already have pretty oily skin. So right now my face is just dry not gonna really put any type of um oil on my face so i'm gonna start off with my primer which is by elf so we're gonna put that on first so i literally just put a little bit on there like that so actually i am gonna try something different um i saw this thing on tiktok actually and it was saying to put like your setting spray and primer and stuff on before you do your makeup that way your uh, skin isn't oily i hate a lip gloss line y'all okay i said to do that before you do your makeup so your skin isn't oily so i got my primer on next i'm gonna go in with setting powder so this is the setting powder that i used it is by black radiance and it is a banana powder um, so we just gonna put some of that on for my setting powder. I'm just gonna use regular brush and we're gonna put this bad boy on. And this is just to like put like um make like a base that way my skin ain't like shining because y'all my skin is really oily like I said I used to think having oily skin was a bad thing but it's really not because I rarely get acne and yeah the place my face shines the most is like my nose my nose gets very shiny sometimes so we just gonna do like that all right Next, we are going to go in with some setting spray. Setting spray is by e.l.f. as well, and it is a matte setting spray. Some people like dewy, some people like matte. I'm a matte girl, which is no shine, so we're going to spray that. Boom. All right. So we're going to let that dry. So when I do my makeup, the first part that I usually like to do is my eyebrows. And I have literally perfected my eyebrows over the course of years. I actually learned how to do my eyebrows on YouTube when I was in like high school. And I've been pretty much doing them the same way ever since. And that is what works for me. Where is my eyebrow? Okay. So this is the eyebrow pencil that I will be using. It is in a black brown. One thing about eyebrows, never use black. Never use black because that's how you get those like clown, dark clown looking eyebrows. And we don't want that. So I use a brown black. It's not black. It's like a dark brown. So, and excuse me y'all because I ain't never really did my makeup on camera. So... I like to do it like that. And then 
I like to bring it up just a little bit, just lighter strokes, cause we gonna blend that in. Then I take my spoolie part and then I just like to kinda lightly do that. That way I'm not getting like too much of like a boxy eyebrow. So just like that. Boom, one brow done. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And like I said, I literally perfected how to do my eyebrows. So this is what works for me. I know there's a million ways to do your eyebrows, but this is what I like. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Boom, we gonna blend that bad boy out like that. Okay. And then it don't have to be perfect because I am gonna go in with um, my concealer and clean them up. Okay, y'all, so my eyebrows are pretty much done. Next, I am gonna go in with my concealer under my brows. So I like to use the um, LA Girl Pro Concealer and this is in Chestnut. Don't know if y'all can see that. Okay, it's Chestnut. So with that, I like to go in with my like an angled type of brush so I like to do my under eyebrow concealer with that it is so hard like honestly doing your makeup in a camera is a little bit harder to do so once you get it under there you're just gonna blend it blend that bad boy down Honestly, I might have to like go in my bathroom so I can look in the mirror and do my makeup because y'all, this is a little bit harder than I thought it would be. And when I do my concealer, I do conceal my eyelid as well. And then we gotta blend it out, but hold on y'all, I need to change locations because this is okay, not bad. This is much better. So where was I? Okay, so I was doing my eyebrow and blending out my eyebrow concealer. And then I'm just going to blend out my eyebrow a little bit more because it was a little too boxy for me. Boom. One eyebrow done. I'm going to do the same thing on the other okay. side. So I concealed under my eyebrows. Next, I'm just going to conceal like the back part so it can get like um, more of like a sharper look. So a little bit on there. And then I'm just going to go... See where I did that right back there? And it's just gonna give me like that. More of like an arch. So I put a little bit and then I'm just gonna spread it upward. Boom. And let's see. I'm doing a little bit down here. Boom. The eyebrows done we're gonna do the same thing on this side so now that i have both of my eyebrows done the next thing i'm gonna do is my foundation and concealer so for me i don't like to do too much foundation and honestly i feel like less is more with my skin so um the foundation that i'm actually going to be using is fenty and this color is 460 so okay so with the foundation 
I actually saw this on TikTok as well. So I'm not going to put foundation on my whole face. I'm only going to do it from like this part down. So I'll show y'all. So with my foundation, I literally like to put just a couple of dabs. Not too much because this foundation is like um, it's like a full coverage. So literally that's all the foundation that I like to use. I don't like my face to feel heavy. And yeah, so, and then I am gonna tap it out with this brush here. So we're just gonna tap. And we're just going to tap it until it is blend out. All right. Tapped it out. Then I'm going to go in with my sponge. If I can find her. Okay. I'm going with this sponge here and I'm just going to tap it off a little bit more. Boom, foundation is done. That is literally all I need, all I want. Do your foundation how you like to do it, but for me, less is more um, because I don't like a whole, whole lot of makeup on my face. So the next thing I'm gonna do is my under eye concealer. And for that, hold on y'all, I can't find my other sponge. Okay, so for my under eye concealer, I am going to use two different concealers. So I'm going to use um, my chestnut again, and then I'm also going to use a lighter concealer, which is called Fawn by the same brand, LA Pro Girl. Okay, so now with the concealer, I'm going to put not a whole lot of this either. So I'm going to do it here, here, and then the lighter one right under my eye. So. I'm gonna do a little bit there, a little bit more. Okay, like that. Other eye. Okay, as you can see, I have it there. And then with the lighter one, I'm gonna go right underneath there. And I'm not using a whole lot of this one either. Boom. So now that that's there, I am going to tap it out some more. To blend it. Well, actually, what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to use um, a brush to kind of blend it out. And then I'm going to use my sponge to blend it out a little bit more. So I'm actually going to bring it like upward a little bit as well. And we're just going to tap it because I don't want to like remove too much of the product. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So you want to go down and up and right under that eye. I might have put a little bit too much, but that's okay because we're going to make it work. Boom. Take your sponge and then you're going to tap. And you're going to tap until that baby is blended. And I am using like a damp sponge. So see how that's nice and blended? Boom. We're going to blend this side. My sponge is a little bit damp and that just kind of helps to... I guess make it spread more evenly. Okay. 
We good. We good. So, I am going to use this eyeshadow palette. I actually found this on Amazon. Um, it is fantasy changeable, but um, it has a couple of colors on it. And when I do my eyeshadows, um, I like to keep them kind of neutral. So especially on darker skin, I love like the brown golds, even like a dark plum. Those type of neutral colors look really good on dark skin. So tonight I'm going to use this one right there. Never tried it, but we're going to see what it look like tonight. So I'm going to use this brush and we are going to put on our eyeshadow. So I'm just going to tap it and let's see how it looks. If I don't like it, then I just will wipe it off. But I think, oh yeah, I'm going to like this one. Mm -hmm. I don't want a whole lot, just a little bit to give me a little color. I'm gonna dab more because I don't want it to be like too, too deep. Just a little light. That's cute. So let's do this one. Just blend this one out a little more. Something about this one is not, okay. Maybe we just need to add a little bit more to get this one. And this one is pretty pigmented, so I don't like to do too, too much. Boom, that is my eyeshadow. Next, I am going to put my lashes on. So, Another thing I learned off of TikTok. So instead of doing my lashes on the top of my lid, I like to do them on the inside part. And what that does is it gives you more of like a natural look. You won't see that line on the top of your eyelid. And it just looks really good. Now this is something that you really have to practice doing because it was a little bit hard for me at first. But now I will not do it any other way. So I got my lashes. These lashes I got just from um, the beauty supply store. Can't remember the name of them, but I love them because they are kind of wispy, um, not too thick. I don't like them big caterpillars on my eyes. No shade to the ones who do, but I don't want that. And this is the lash glue I'm gonna be using. It is by Salon Pro 30. So, so what I'm going to do with my lash glue, instead of putting it like on this part, I'm going to put it on the top because it's going to go under the lid. So I'm going to put glue on both of my lashes and kind of let it set a little bit so it can get um like tacky. And that just makes it easier to put the actual lash on. Boom, we got one. Mm -mm. Lord have mercy, I'm making a mess. Okay. So we got one. And I'm going to do the other. All right, boom. So I'm going to let that sit for like a minute so it can kind of dry up a little bit and then I'm going to put my lashes on. I'm letting that get a little bit tacky. I am going to do a little bit of contour on my cheekbones, a little bit on my nose. I'm not one that likes to do the forehead, all that. I've never learned how to do that. Don't really care to learn. I just like to do what I like to do. So for the contour, I am using NYX, um, this contour here and it is like a liquid contour but what i'm actually going to do is instead of putting it directly on my face i'm going to put it on a sponge and then kind of tap it out so i'm going to add some 
into the this part like the pointy part of my sponge and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go right where my cheekbone is so we're gonna do a little bit up there let's see okay and we're gonna do a little bit on this side like that and like that so then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take i think i'm gonna take a brush and kind of tap it out i feel like i literally do my makeup different every time sometimes okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this brush here and we're just gonna tap it out to blend it And you want to keep tapping. You want to just keep tapping. And I don't like it to look like one harsh line. So I'm actually going to tap and kind of move it downward a little bit. Mm, we got to tap some more. Okay, I'm going to tap it with this and I'm going to go back through with my sponge and tap it some more. All right, boom, there we go. All right, so next I am going to go ahead and apply my lashes. They should be good to go. All right, so, all right, y'all bear with me because this is a little harder. Okay, actually it's not quite dry yet, so so I am going to do a little bit of blush. One thing, I never really used to wear blush, but now I'm like, I like blush because it does give it a little bit of a little oomph. So this is the blush palette that I'm going to use. It is called Queen Illuminator, and I actually found this on Amazon as well. So with my blush, I'm actually going to go like right up here, a little bit above where I did my little contour. And for my blush, I'm going to use this little brush here. My favorite one, Lord, my favorite one is the Brick Red, which is this one. So I'm just going to tap it. And then we're going to tap it. Okay, we'll do a little more. All right, and there's my little blush. Before I forget, let me contour my nose just a little bit. So for that, I'm actually gonna go like here and here. So I'm just gonna do a little, little smidget. So a little bit there, and a little bit there. Boom, just like that. And then I'm gonna blend this bad boy out. I know everybody likes to contour differently. And like I said, I am not a makeup artist. So I do it how I, it literally was like a trial and error type of thing. I kind of just winged it and did it. 
So I'm gonna go back with my sponge and I'm just gonna keep blending right. it. Nose is done and as you can see, it kind of just makes this part look a little bit more in, but I think it's cute. So, all right, now let's get into these lashes. So like I said, I'm gonna go under instead of over because it literally makes it look like the lashes are coming directly out of your eyelid you won't see that little line and i feel like you know sometimes when you put lashes on you get one that makes it like you have a lazy eye this way you don't get none of that so i'm gonna go well let me put these on i already showed y'all told y'all how i'm gonna do it it's gonna be a little bit harder for me to do it on camera so i'm gonna put them on and then i'll show y'all after all right so i got my lashes on not gonna lie these are a little bit more dramatic than what i normally like to go for but they're gonna be worn tonight so um next thing i'm gonna do is more setting powder so i'm gonna go ahead and set everything in i'm just gonna take my sponge and just go right under where my under eye concealer is i'm gonna tap that thing on there i do like to put a little bit where like on my nose right here boom and that's all i like to use so with my setting powder i am going to go ahead and just press it in Like that, and with this, I'm just going to kind of go like that. Let's just lightly brush it a little bit. All right, so next I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight in some areas. So this is the palette I like to use, which is the Warrior palette. And this one is my favorite. So I always, always, always like to highlight like in here, like the corner of my eye, a little bit of my nose. So I'm just going to tap it, do a little inner corner, boom. Got my inner eye, and then for my nose, I usually just take the same brush and kind of just lightly do a little line there and on the tip. And I take my finger and I just blend it out a little bit. And last, I am going to do my lip. So for my lip, I do like a really neutral lip stick gloss slash thing. So I'm gonna take a brown liner and I'm gonna line my lips first. So. I'm just gonna line it. And I'm actually gonna like over line it just a little bit because when I put my lipstick on, it'll all kinda, it'll play out. Trust the process. Like that. And then I usually just take like a little brush and kind of bring it up a little bit. That way it doesn't look like a perfect line. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this NYX Soft Lip Cream and this color is London. And I am going to, well actually first, I'm gonna take this lipstick. Uh, 
This is called Peach. Peachy or something like that. I can't remember who this lipstick is by because I've had it for a while, but I'm just going to tap it on a little bit like that. And then I do my lips like this. Then, so just a little bit of that one. And then I take this one. I'm going to do a little bit here. Right like that. And a little bit here. We're going to tap it again. So I tap that on there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of gloss and give it a little glossiness. All right, so the last thing which I actually forgot to do is, so I'm gonna go under my eyelid with a white liner. So let me tell y'all about the white liner. It literally gives it a little oomph to the look. So, just gonna line it just a little bit. And you can do more. It just depends on how dramatic you wanna be. And it's okay if you mess up a little bit because I am going to um, go through with some mascara on the bottom there. So I got that and then my mascara is Maybelline Great Lash Mascara. We're just gonna line these lashes on the bottom. Lastly, I'm going to finish it off with some setting spray, more of the e.l.f. matte setting spray. And that is my makeup look for the night. So I'm going to go get dressed and then we're going to do part two of the video with the dental hygiene. Okay, stuff. so now that I'm all dressed and ready, now it's time for the actual hygiene portion of the video. So... You are a newly graduated hygiene student. You have your resume ready and you are ready to go onto the workforce. So first thing is first, with the resume, you literally want to keep your resume short and sweet. You do not want multiple pages. Try to keep your resume to one page. Um, I know you may have worked jobs eight years ago. Keep everything within three to five years as far as your work um, history and if you are one of those people who have had multiple jobs within like months at a time don't put that on there because what they're looking at is okay they worked at this job for a month they worked at this job for a month in this job for a month why didn't they stay they're not really consistent in their work history which means that they might not be a consistent person to hire on the job so definitely keep it short um, like I said, three to five years and those jobs that you've stayed at for a good amount of time. Now, going back, um, a lot of people are doing cover letters now. The cover letter is sometimes the only thing that that employer is going to read. Sometimes they might not even look at your resume. So make sure that cover letter pops. Make sure it is an eye opener. Make sure it's going to grab the person that's reading it because sometimes the cover letter is all they need to see that they need to hire you. So um, I know when I was in hygiene school, they actually prepared us with resumes and cover letters. A lot of hygiene programs may do that or they may not. If they don't, I definitely would recommend maybe Googling good cover letters eye openers for cover letters because like I said sometimes that is the only thing that they will actually look at um also for your resume do not put these weird fonts title fonts none of that keep it simple you don't need all these designs and colors keep it simple with black and white black and white is very professional um so definitely don't do all these like borders and crazy stuff to make it look fancy because 
let's be real they don't care about that like that's just real they don't um so okay now after your resume say you get a job and you have your interview for your interview always 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 be prepared with scrubs because sometimes offices may ask you, you know, are you able to do a working interview today? So that's something also you need to be prepared for is to do a working interview because if they ask you, are you able to do the working interview? Go ahead and do it because that is a really, really good look on your behalf. Um, so if you have kids, go ahead and make arrangements. Be like, look, I have an interview, but I may be doing a working interview. A working interview may be a couple of patients. A working interview may be all day. So just be prepared just in case they ask you, are you able to do a working interview that day? Um, when you bring your scrubs, make sure they are a neutral color, preferably black. Black usually goes no matter what color the office is wearing. What you don't want to do is be up in there with some bright pink scrubs, green, all these loud colors. Definitely go with black because that's very chic. It is professional and it will kind of just help you blend in more if you have to do a working interview that day. Um, now, if they don't ask you to do a working interview and they just offer you the job, I definitely would ask to do a working interview. Never, ever, ever, ever choose a hygiene job without doing a working interview. And personally, when I got my job, I did a two day working interview and that actually helped me to see how the office flowed, helped me to see like how my flow would be with the office to see if I was a good fit or if they were a good fit for me. So never accept a job without doing a working interview. I don't think a job is going to deny you because you ask to do a working interview if they don't offer it. If anything, I would think that that would make them hire you even more. Well, want to hire you even more because you want to come in and do a working interview and you seem interested in the office. So working interviews are definitely a plus when it comes to getting any hygiene job. Um, another thing is um, types of pay with hygiene. So there are different types of pay when it comes to getting a hygiene job. There is salary which of course, most people know that salary is pretty much you get a set amount of money that you make per year. Um, no matter how much you're working, you are guaranteed to make that amount of money per year. There is also hourly, which is of course where you have your set you know, pay and then depending on the amount of hours you work, that's what you get paid. And then there is production. For a new hygienist worker, I personally would not recommend that you go into an office that is strictly production, and here is why. So basically, production pay is, um, so each procedure that you do in a dental office has a dollar amount to that procedure, like say a profi or a cleaning. Like in my office, I think a profi is $102. Um, X bite wing x-rays, I think that's $92 each office has their own set prices but basically production is everything you do in your appointments into that dollar amount and then you get a certain percentage of that um amount that you make if that makes sense so okay let's say if you work at an office um i'm gonna say my office for example so at my office we actually have a goal that they want us to meet each week so currently our goal per week is like I think it's 5,600, no, actually it's 6,722 or something like that. But that's basically what they expect us to make each week. It sounds like a lot, but when you are a seasoned hygienist, you know you can get that production like that. It's super easy to do. Now, as a new hygienist, you're not... Basically, for production pay, you want to make the most out of each appointment, which means you want to add on those arrestings. You want to encourage that fluoride. You want to try to do everything to make that dollar amount in that appointment more because more production means more money if it's a production-based office. Now, say if you have a week where your schedule completely falls apart, you see barely any patients. That does not look good for you because... You're not bringing home any money or as much money as you could because your schedule fell apart. But those hygienists who have been working in the field for a little bit, they're more confident with calling patients in. They're more confident with doing a scaling and root planning on a new patient in 30 minutes. So if you are a new hygienist, I definitely would not recommend a strictly production office. 
Now, my office, we actually have hourly plus production. So I get my regularly, regular hourly pay. Plus, if I go over my production goal, especially with me doing assistant hygiene, then I get an extra bonus on top of that. So those offices are really good because... I mean, you get your regular pay, plus you get a little extra on the side too. So I love that my office is hourly plus production. But like I said, new hygienist, if you want to do it, definitely go for it. But I would not recommend you to go into a strictly production office because you really don't have that confidence to build your appointments and do the most for your appointments. Not going to lie, as a new hygienist, you are still learning the ropes. It is not going to be like you just get out here in the real world and you're just producing, producing, producing. It comes with time and you have to build confidence in your verbiage, your education to patients and all of that. I mean, school, of course, helps a lot. It helps a whole lot. But in order to gain that confidence as a hygienist, you literally have to be working for a while and kind of gauging your patients and kind of seeing, you know, how to do it. So... Definitely, I would probably recommend something either salary or hourly for a new hygienist. Um, going back to interviews. So at your interview, definitely ask questions. Do not, when they ask, do you have any questions? Don't say no. You need to at least have three questions already in your head or written down that you want to ask them. That way it doesn't look like you're not interested or that you, you know, Definitely ask questions. Um, and another thing I would do is bring a copy of your resume and bring a notepad to write notes. Um, the reason I say bring a copy of your resume is say if the office manager is just testing you and they say, oh, you know, I can't find my your resume. It's in here somewhere. Then you have an extra copy to just give to them. It makes you look prepared. And that is a really good look. Um, like I said, bring a notebook to take notes. That way you're not just sitting there. You're actually taking notes to make it seem like or, you know, to be engaged and interested and know that you really want to know about that office. Um, so, yeah, I think that is the basis of that. Um, and then for your work in interviews, like I said, those are top tier because you can kind of see how that office runs what you don't want to do is just go ahead and accept a position and you've never even worked in that office because it could be a complete nightmare for you you may get into an office and you and the dentist don't work well together you might get into an office where you know it's just not a good vibe so one thing that I like about my office is that when I walked into that office I saw that the office was very diverse so that was super important for me because, you know, as a woman of color, it was really, you know, it felt good to go into an office where everybody looked different. It wasn't just one look in the office and it made me feel more comfortable because as we know, I mean, let's not act like we don't know, but in the dental field, some offices, everybody looks the same. So you definitely want to go into an office that makes you feel comfortable, never feel like you have to just accept a position. Um, go to an office that you know you're going to feel comfortable. You don't want to go somewhere where you're going to feel like you're on edge um, because when you feel like you're on edge, that is going to definitely affect your performance. Or if you notice that dentist is not treating you well, do not stick with that office. I know that dentists sometimes get frustrated, but I have heard some horror stories about hygienists saying that dentists were throwing things at them. You know, just being kind of rude. And please know, you do not have to take that. You do not have to accept that. Um, the dentist that I work with, he does not step on my toes. He lets me treatment plan accordingly. He does not act rude. Um, and one thing to be on the lookout for new hygienists, if a dentist starts kind of insulting you in front of patients, that is a big red flag. Now, when I say insulting you, I'm talking... Of course, as a new hygienist, you're not going to get everything right. So you take those bite wings and the contacts may be a little bit overlapped. If that dentist starts saying things to, you know, make you feel dumb in front of the patient, that's a big red flag because at the end of the day, they know that you're learning. So if they cannot, you know, tell you in private, like, hey, maybe you should do this to angulate to open up the contacts. You never want to go to, to a dentist that makes you feel dumb or makes you not feel like a provider. 
As hygienists, we are providers, so you should be treated as such. So never feel like you have to go into an office and tolerate the treatment that you're getting. Um, but yeah, so that is, I think, pretty much it. If you have any questions about, you know, interviews, resumes, anything you feel like you want to know as a new hygienist, um, please comment below. Um, oh, I almost forgot. So another thing, whatever office you're going into, research that office. I feel like most people would do this, but definitely research that office. Um, look up their website. If you can find out what type of dental software they work with, I don't care if you're not familiar with that software, you should definitely be going on YouTube or some type of thing to look up how to work that dental software. You never want to go into an office completely clueless because like I said, you may just get thrown into a working interview. So definitely be prepared for that. Some offices do double columns for hygienists. Do not let that scare you. I'm telling you, if you have a good hygiene assistant, you will do just fine. Um, it sounds like a lot, but basically with working double columns, it helps the flow. It helps them get more patients in. And when I tell you, if you, like I said, if you have a good hygiene assistant, then you will do great. Um, another thing, do not be a hygiene prima donna. Some people already have this predisposed, um, interpretation that hygienists are prima donnas. Like we don't want to do our own instruments. We don't want to clean our room. Even if you have a hygiene assistant, definitely take initiative. Do not let that hygiene assistant be doing everything for you. Clean your room. If you have time, take your own instruments. Do your own instruments if you don't have a sterilization tech. Because at my office, we don't have a sterilization tech. So we pretty much do our own instruments as we go. You do not want to be that hygienist that gets a bad rep because you're going and just dropping off your instruments and leaving it for somebody else to do. That is going to cause... So much drama, people are going to start talking and they're going to think you're this hygiene prima donna, prima donna, which is what you don't want. Um, but yeah, that's really it this time. Um, like I said, if y'all have any questions about anything, please comment below. And thank y'all for watching. I'm about to go eat and drink a little bit. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.